Here's a preview of what you're gonna see in just one day in Rome. If you're looking for the perfect one day itinerary, you just found it. Maybe you're coming into Rome from a ship and you're gonna be at Civita Vecchia where you literally only have one day. You're gonna be there in the morning and then you have to be back to your ship in the evening. This is the perfect itinerary for you. It's really perfect for anybody that wants to explore Rome in just one day. If you're coming to Rome via a cruise, the following information is for you. But if you're coming to Rome any other way, skip ahead to minute mark 222. This is very important. When you arrive in Rome, you're gonna probably arrive around 6 a.m. on your port. You're gonna to need to get off your boat just as soon as possible. This is one day you really can't afford to sleep in or be late because if, it, if you are, you're gonna end up spending most of your time in Rome in line, especially if you're gonna see the Vatican. We wanna to get to the Vatican by eight or 8.30 at the very latest, which means you need to leave the boat no later than like seven in the morning. Right outside the boat, there's gonna be either taxis or buses that will take you to the nearest train station, which is just about a mile away. Get on either one, either the bus or the taxi. The taxi's probably a little bit faster, but you're gonna rip you off a little bit. They're gonna charge you somewhere between five and 10 euros per person to go a mile in the taxi, but you know, it's one of those things you really can't do much about it. Anyway, get to the train station and then you're gonna get on the train heading into Rome. Trains leave about every 20 minutes or so. And we're not gonna go all the way to the Termi train station. We're gonna get off on the San Pietro station, which is about, about a 10 minute walk to the Vatican. And that's the quickest way to get to the Vatican because we wanna to get to the Vatican before the lines start really getting long and then you'll end up spending your whole day in line. So that's why the urgency is to get there as soon as possible. It's not uncommon to spend two hours plus in line at the Vatican, but if we can arrive by eight or 8.30 in the morning, instead of waiting two hours in line, we're probably gonna only have to wait maybe, hopefully less than 30 minutes. So when you take the train into Rome, you're gonna get off, you're, most people go all the way to the Caramini train station. We're, we're gonna get off a few stations early right here at the San Pietro station. Um, so keep your eye out for that. And you're gonna exit there at the San Pietro station. Let me back out a little bit. You're gonna see this is the Vatican right here. It's probably about 400 meters. You're gonna walk through this neighborhood into the Vatican. If you're worried about getting lost, just follow the crowd. Most of the people that are exiting that station will be heading towards the Vatican. So you're gonna head into the Vatican, and when you get into the Vatican, you're gonna get in line, which is on this end right here. So if everything's gone right, we're arriving here around eight in the morning, maybe 8.30. The line should be fairly small still, so you can hop in line, and hopefully we don't have to spend more than 10 or 15 minutes in line. If you're showing up around 10 in the morning and after, you're probably, the line might be over here or so, and it's probably two hours plus. So you're gonna miss out on a lot of things you could see in Rome if you had you just gotten up a little bit earlier. So this is one day where you really need to focus on getting to Rome by 8.30 at the very latest. So once you've gone through the Vatican, you're gonna come out and instead of heading back to the train station where we came from, out this, this direction here, we're gonna head out the opposite side and we're gonna to head to a metro station where we're gonna catch the metro and head to the Colosseum. So you're gonna head right through this main alleyway here and the good news is a lot of people will be doing the same thing. It's kinda of like you just follow the crowd and it'll take you right to the uh, metro station which is right over in this direction here and that's where we're gonna hop on the metro again and head to Termini. So one thing I wanna point out, you might be getting hungry. You can jump into one of these uh, little shops and grab a croissant or something, but if you want a little pizza, one of my favorite pizzerias is right on this road. Once you cross this kind of like square here, the very first right, there's right here is a place called Pen Pizza MPO. It's a little place, it's got a few tables. It's, they serve these little pizzas and uh, they're really, really good. So they're cheap, they're like five or six euros. Anyway, a good place to grab a bite to eat if you're hungry at this point. Grab that or just grab a croissant. But either way, you need to head after that. You need to head onto the metro, which is right here. It's the Ottaviano Station. Okay, so we're here at the Vatican, and we're going to take a metro directly all the way here to the Termini train station. And we're on line A right now, and we need to switch to line B. And they cross here at Termini. So when you get to Termini, you're going to hop onto line B, and you're going to head to the Colosseum which is really close to, the, to here, maybe, maybe a five or 10 minute metro ride, but it's right here. And there's a station called Coliseum Exit or Coliseum Station, and that's where we're gonna exit and we're gonna start our walking tour from here 
right at the Colosseum. So this is the itinerary I created on an app called Kamut. Kamut is a paid app, but the good news is in Rome it's free to use because it's one of those demo cities. So I'm gonna leave a link to this particular route in the, uh, in the description of the video. So what you wanna do is take that and then it will give you GPS directions exactly where to go so you're not gonna get lost. It'll take you from one site to the next site. It's super easy to follow. But we're gonna start here at the Colosseum just briefly and head up to, this is the Via Imperial Forum, up to Piazza Venezia, over to the Compadolio, over to Theater Marcello, through the Jewish Ghetto, over to Largo, Argentina, this is where Caesar was murdered, over to Campo dei Fiori, Piazza Navona, Pantheon, Trevi's Fountain, and finally the uh, Spanish Steps. So when we exit the Colosseum, we should be somewhere between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. Hopefully that's kind of the time we're looking at, and if we are, we're doing great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore the Colosseum a little bit. We're not gonna go inside the Colosseum. We just don't have time on this tour, not for the one day tour. But you're gonna get some great views of the Colosseum, and then we're gonna take a walk down what I think is probably Rome's prettiest walk, and that is down the Via Imperial Forum right here. It's really a nice street because there's limited traffic, only buses and taxis are allowed on this street. And there's lots of uh, street performers, lots to see. You see the, the forum on both sides. It's just such a beautiful walk. And uh, so take your time as you walk down this street. We're gonna head to a piazza down here called Piazza Venezia. Let me turn that around a bit. Now you might recognize this big monument here. This is the um, Victor Manuel Monument. It's absolutely massive. So as we walk around this corner here, we're gonna head over to a piazza that was designed by Michelangelo. Super interesting. And uh, there's like two stairways here. You see one here going to this cool church. And then there's another one going right into this piazza. This is the piazza called the Compidolio. It's designed by Michelangelo. great things to do is just walk right to the right of this, this building here just go to the right and there's a little perch right down here that you've got great views of the Roman Forum as you exit and come back you can also see some really interesting views from this side as well but when you're done here we're gonna need to back down these stairs and we're gonna continue on down this road, so we're gonna continue on around the corner. I'll just back out here a little bit, see it. So we came around the building here, and then the GPS is gonna tell you where to go. It's really simple, but you're gonna go here to the Theater Marcello right here. Once we get in there, you're gonna take this like path through here, this dirt path, kinda, I think it's a cement, but let me see here. And we're going to walk through some of Rome's, what I think are some of the neatest uh, ruins right through here. And we're going to make our way into the Jewish ghetto. So as you walk through the Jewish ghetto, there's a lot of nice restaurants. And if you're really hungry, you can stop here and grab a bite to eat. But one thing I do recommend you do is you go to this Jewish bakery. They've been selling pastries for 300 years. It doesn't have a name on, name on the building, but the pastries are there are amazing. It's not about presentation, so it's not like the typical Roman bakery where presentation is really important along with taste. These just taste good. They don't necessarily look that great, but they are incredible. So I strongly recommend you uh, try the Jewish pizza. Here's the Jewish pizza. It doesn't look like pizza maybe, but look on the bottom. It even looks like it's burnt, but it's actually just perfect. I've had these before. That's kind of how they always are. And inside, So good when you bite into them. It's like nothing you've ever tried, and it's not like regular pizza, it's more of a pastry. Um, not super sweet, but super good. Anyway, as you come through here, you're gonna continue on this road, and we're gonna come out to this main road. Once you get out to this main road, the GPS will take you out there. It's just a short walk, maybe five minutes, and we're gonna be at Largo, Argentina. This is the piazza where Julius Caesar was stabbed in 44 BC, and he was murdered there.
So right around the corner here, there's a place called Pizza Florida. It's right down here. So it's kind of a hole in the wall place, but they have great pizza by the slice. And uh, you can get big slices, little slices. You tell them how much you want. But they have tons of flavors to choose from and it's incredible pizza. So I strongly recommend you go in there and it's kind of a to-go place. So what you're gonna do is you're right in here, grit the pizza, then walk across here. And from there, you can kind of look over this square and there's a cat sanctuary there as well. So you're gonna see a lot of cats. It's kind of fun to look at the cats, eat pizza, and just enjoy the atmosphere. Once we're done with pizza, even if you don't get pizza, go and take a look at it. But once we're done, we're gonna kind of head back to where we just came from, um, in just a little bit. Let me get a little perspective here. And we're gonna walk around this corner. And if you're on, using a GPS, it's pretty simple. It's gonna tell you to turn. And we're gonna walk right down this street. It's not very far at all, maybe a five minute walk or so. And we're gonna head down to the Campo dei Fiori. It's Rome's oldest outdoor market. Let's take a look. <laughs> So before we leave, there's two things I want to point out. In the corner here, in the, in the piazza, whether the market's open or not, this is always here. This Forno is going. It's a little shop. Um, so there's a little place called Forno right here. They make lots of breads. It's an oven, and they make breads and pizzas and pastries. What I recommend you do is right next door to it, right here, they take the, the, the pizza Bianca that they make here, they take it over here, and then they make it into sandwiches, and the sandwiches here are my favorite in Rome. They're very inexpensive, four to five euros. The sandwiches are just super, super good. The bread is made like within minutes of you eating it. Super great. I'm just finishing this panino, this uh, pizza sandwich. So good. That pizza Bianca is just perfect. It's got a nice little slightly salty flavor right on the outside. It's got lots of mozzarella in there. The prosciutto crudo, super, super good. If you want to grab a pizza like a more traditional Roman, like stereotypical pizza, there's a Napolitan style pizza place right here that's very good. And you can eat, eat out here in the patio and they also have interior dining. And it was probably going to take you, you know, about an hour to maybe a little less uh, if you want to grab pizza there. But that's more like the full size pizza. And if you want to try a Napolitan style pizza, it's best in Naples, but this is a close second. It's very good. So from the Campo dei Fiori, we're going to head over to another famous piazza called Piazza Navona, which is only about 300 meters right to Piazza Navona. Let's take a look. So before we head off to the next site, I want to point out something. Right down this road here, there's a little road. There are two places to grab great dessert. There's one called Two Sizes, which let's look down here a little bit. It's right, I think it's right here. Anyway, there's a place called Two Sizes where you can get great tiramisu. And just up the road from that, they have a place called Frigidarium, which has some of the best gelato and uh, definitely swing by there. It's time to get gelato, you're in Rome. This is one of the best gelaterias right here for sure. There's a lot of them. This is one of my favorites, but um. Yeah, do that. Maybe come back out to this piazza after you grab your tiramisu or gelato. Enjoy your ice cream as you uh, check out the piazza and watch all the, all the people walk by. Kind of a fun thing to do. So from here, we don't have very far to the next monument. In fact, it's right up this road here. You might recognize it. This is the Pantheon. This is a very interesting and one of my favorite buildings in all of Rome. It's absolutely massive and... Uh, Let's go down and take a look. So one thing I might recommend you do if you're, you know, let's say you didn't get pizza, you're hungry, um, right here there's a little sandwich shop, shop and it's called Lantico Venaio. It's uh, originated in Florence, but anyway, it's very popular here in Rome too. And what people do is you grab a sandwich the only thing I'd say the negative is sometimes you gotta wait you know, 30 minutes just to get a sandwich. Um, but the nice thing is if once you get your sandwich, you just walk down, you take it, and you sit down here on these steps and enjoy the sandwich with you know, tons of other people doing the same thing. But uh, it's super great atmosphere and it's, it's you know, something that's great to do. Honestly, it's fun. So from the Pantheon, we have about a 10 or 15 minute walk over to Trevi's Fountain. So 
So once we leave the Trevi's Fountain, we're gonna head to our last stop, and hopefully right now it's by around four o'clock, either side of four o'clock, maybe 4.30. Um, we're gonna make our way over to the Spanish Steps. So when we're done, we're gonna need to this, see this sign here, it says the Metro. You just walk right around here, there's an alleyway here, you hop on the Metro and head to the Termini train station where we're gonna catch the train back to Chavita Vecchia. If you're looking for a one day itinerary in Rome, I think this one is perfect, especially with the GPS guidance. You don't need to pay for a tour guide and you still get to see most of Rome's sites in a single day. I'd love to hear from somebody that actually went on this itinerary, maybe in the future. If you do that, come back, leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you like videos about Rome, consider subscribing. To the next one, alla prossima, ciao. I will be your shield in the fiercest battle out of you from all these arrows and the sword I will, will keep you from danger. Let me